Greetings from the Purdue Global University's Academic Success Center Science Center. In this presentation, we'll go over what epithelial tissue includes, their functions, and the characteristics of different types of epithelial tissues and glands. What does epithelial tissue include? Epithelial tissue includes epithelia and glands. Epithelia are defined as layers of cell covering internal or external surfaces. Epithelia is the plural form of the word epithelium. Glands are structures that produce fluid secretions. The functions of epithelial tissue include 1. Providing physical protection by moving fluids over the epithelium and or by having multiple layers. 2. Controls permeability by moving fluids through the epithelium. 3. Providing sensation which offers protection by relaying messages about tissue damage. And 4 producing specialized secretions that can also protect the underlying tissues and relay messages to other cells via secretions. Some characteristics of epithelia include polarity, which is when there are two distinct sides to an epithelial cell, an apical surface, which contains microvilli to increase absorption or secretion or cilia on a ciliated epithelium to move fluids, and a basolateral surface, which is connected to the underlying tissue through the basement membrane. Epithelia have intercellular connections known as cell junctions, which form bonds with other cells or extracellular material. Three common connections include gap junctions, tight junctions, and desmosomes. Gap junctions allow rapid communication by permitting small molecules and ions to pass through. Tight junctions are located between two plasma membranes and prevent passage of water and solutes and keep enzymes, acids, and wastes in the lumen of the digestive tract. Desmosomes adhere cell membranes to neighboring tissue cells and allow attachment to the basement membrane. Epithelial tissue is characterized as avascular, as the tissue does not contain blood vessels. Lastly, epithelial cells are replaced by continual division of stem cells, which are located near the basement membrane. The classification of epithelia is based on shape and the number of layers. Shapes include squamous, which is thin and flat, cuboidal, which is square-shaped, and columnar, which has tall, slender rectangles. The number of layers can either be simple or stratified. Simple epithelium has a single layer of cells, while stratified epithelium has several layers of cells. Simple squamous epithelial lines body cavities, blood vessels, and the inner lining of the heart, and it's important for absorption and for diffusion. Stratified squamous epithelia can be found on the surface of the skin and in parts of the gastrointestinal tract that protect against mechanical stresses and it contains keratin that adds strength and water resistance. Simple cuboidal epithelia is located in glands and portions of kidney tubules, and it's important for secretion and absorption. Stratified cuboidal epithelia is relatively rare, but it can be found in ducts of sweat glands and mammary glands for secretion and protection. Transitional epithelia is found in the urinary bladder that can tolerate repeated cycles of stretching without damage. Simple columnar epithelia is found in the stomach, small intestine, and large intestine for absorption and secretion. Pseudostratified columnar epithelia is found in the nasal cavity, the trachea, and the bronchi. They typically have cilia for movement across the membrane and protection. Stratified columnar epithelia provides protection in the pharynx, anus, and urethra, and is relatively rare. Glands are collections of epithelial cells that produce secretions. Endocrine glands are glands that release hormones that enter the bloodstream. Exocrine glands produce exocrine secretions, but instead of releasing the secretions through the bloodstream, they discharge the secretions through ducts onto the epithelial surfaces. Gland structures include unicellular glands, which include goblet cells and cells in the epithelia of the intestines that secrete mucin, which mixes with water to form mucus, and multicellular exocrine glands, which are classified by the structure of the duct. There are also different methods of secretion, merocrine, apocrine, and holocrine secretion. 
Merocrine secretions are released by secretory vesicles, known as exocytosis, and can be found in tissues like sweat glands. Apocrine secretions are released by shedding cytoplasm, such as the secretions by the mammary glands. Holocrine secretions are released by cells bursting, killing gland cells, and replacing them by stem cells in tissues like sebaceous glands, which secrete oil onto the skin. In summary, we described how epithelial tissue includes epithelia and glandular tissue. Its functions include physical protection, create secretions, control permeability, and provide sensations. Epithelia has characteristics of polarity, cellularity, attachment, avascularity, and regeneration. Epithelia can be classified by the type of shape, squamous, cuboidal, or columnar, and the number of layers, simple or stratified. Lastly, we described glandular epithelia, what it does, its types, its structures, and its methods of secretion. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.